Hello, welcome. My name is Ariana Amini, and hopefully I'm going to change the way you study. I'm gonna give you an example, um, starting off with how important studying actually is. Medical practitioners, they go to school for years, they spend tens of thousands of dollars and about as many man hours trying to retain life-saving medical information. They learn medical terminology, biology, they learn procedures, techniques, and many fields of study that they will need to implement into practice in order to take that leap and help deliver professional medical care. In a 2006 research conducted by the University of Oregon, they took a class of surgical residents who were learning how to surgically suture arteries. They split them into two separate groups. Each received the same study materials, but one group implemented a small change in how they studied them. When tested one month later, the group that performed the surgeries and implemented that small change did 70% better than the other residents. Before we discuss that method, let's explore how the brain functions, how you receive and process and store information. If you are tasked with trying to memorize, let's say the anatomy of a heart, when you're introduced to the new concept, the memory is temporarily encoded with groups of neurons. This is happening in an area of the brain called the hippocampus. As you continue trying to memorize the workings of the heart or when you take an exam, you reactivate these same neurons. This repeated firing of neurons strengthens the connection between the brain cells. It stabilizes memory. Gradually, the information of the heart's anatomy is stored in the long-term memory. There aren't many foolproof theories or methods um, proving how short-term is transferred to long-term memory, but most medical journals say it happens in between study sessions, and most importantly and crucially, while we sleep. Getting good rest is an integral part of the learning process. Students sometimes go for study methods like rereading textbooks or highlighting the most important information, but these methods can work for some, but for the most part, they give us a false sense of comprehension. Now, this is because we have the information right in front of us. We have immediate access to it. So we fool ourselves into thinking that we're actually comprehending. Um, what my theory is, is that taking good notes, paraphrasing, teaching others, and then testing yourself this is how you actually can allow yourself to have a fighting chance at retaining any kind of study material. Um, I believe that effective note taking is important because it supports your listening efforts. It allows you to test your understanding of the material and it helps you remember the material better when you write these key ideas down. It gives you a sense of what the instructor thinks is important and if done correctly, it creates the ultimate study guide. When I say note-taking, I am not talking about the typical run-of-the-mill listening to someone lecture and writing down notes that you'll never look at again. I'm thinking that note-taking should be an experience. I'm talking about putting pen to paper. I'm talking about letting your mind listen to the information, read the information, and now writing the information. This step is crucial in my own memorization and my own academic career. Um, this step also helps you make it an activity. Um, I use fun colors. I make stars and shapes next to the most important facts that I really need to memorize and hold on to. I draw pictures and diagrams of the anatomy so that my brain can capture the information like a camera. Um, once I've created a piece of art, which is actually just my notes, I really retain the information. This is when I go through and I use it as a study guide. I paraphrase the information from the text, 
from my study guide and I create my own document trying to solidify what I'm trying to learn. Um, this really helps lock in the subject and retain the material. I can create then a test and gauge how much I've retained. But at this step, what if you're still getting the answers wrong? Well, making mistakes is actually a healthy way of learning. It has been proven in the Hoskins Visual Learning Study Guide that making mistakes while studying is actually conducive to future competence. It's theorized that as you rack your brain for the answer, you activate relevant pieces of knowledge that help you eventually connect the dots and solve the puzzle. I hope these tips help you in your academic pursuits and your scholarly career and give you the much needed help we all need as students of schooling, students in new forms of career pathways and trainings and students of the world. Thank you and I appreciate your time.